Tem Talk Education. Uh, we are continuing with organic chemistry and uh, we have reached a level of looking at <coughs> functional group isomerism. In functional group isomerism, it is all about to change of a functional group. Remember we said functional group determines is the center of all chemical properties of homologous series. Now once the functional group changes, then the chemical properties should definitely also change. That is a functional group isomerism. Um, we want to take an example of uh, alcohols uh, being isomeric with ethers alcohols being isomeric with ethers yeah, these alcohols are really isomeric with ethers for level that uh, one isomer can be an alcohol, and then another isomer can be an ether. But then what is the difference between the two? The difference between the two is that once the functional group changes from alcohols to ethers, then even the chemical properties of the two elements, or the two compounds, also change. They definitely become different, and therefore they are no longer same compounds. If we look at an alcohol like C2, H6O. This compound can have an alcohol isomer. It can have an alcohol isomer. At the same time, this compound can have an ether isomer. The alcohol isomer could be C H3. CH2, then OH, and then we call it ethanol. Then the ether isomer could be CH3 or CH3. Now, when we look at this compound, the alcohol isomer, it is having two carbon atoms, like the molecular formula, then six hydrogen atoms like the molecular formula and one hydrogen then still <coughs> the ether isomer also has two carbons uh, six hydrogens and then one oxygen but what changes is the functional group in this alcohol the functional group is is that one but then in the ether group okay, the functional group here in the alcohol isomer is OH group. But then in the ether isomer, the functional group is simply O dash O. So these are two very different compounds with the two very different uh, chemical properties. And yet, both conform to the same general uh, molecular formula. So we shall say alcohols are really isomeric with the ethers. Now, the principal difference between them, although they have the same molecular formula, but change of functional group is that uh, alcohols have a terminal functional group. That's the principal difference between alcohols and ethers. While ethers have an internal functional group. That's the principal difference between them. So we are saying functional group isomerism is the existence of compounds with the same molecular formula but differ in the functional group. Now we can advance and look at another type of 
compounds which still exhibit a functional group isomerism. And I want to say it is not only alcohols, but we have a variety of organic compounds, homologous series that exhibit functional group isomerism. Second case is the carbonyl compounds. These carbonyl compounds also exhibit functional group isomerism. For example, we can look at the general formula of carbonyl compounds being CN H2N uh, plus 1 then O. N plus 1, then O. Now, if you look at a case when, uh, for example, our, our N is uh, greater or equal to 3, then we can say we have C3H. This is 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 3, Six no, it is, it is two and four. If you can look at that, this is six, then all. Now, from this molecular formula, we can obtain the two isomers. And the first isomer will be said, I will get in what I call the ketone isomer. Ketone isomer, which is CH3, CO, then CH3. That is ketone isomer. Then we can still get an aldehyde isomer. Now this aldehyde isomer could be CH3 CH2 CH then with a hybrid. All this on somebody could still write it as CH3 Yeah, both cases represent the same thing. Now, when we look at this functional group, it is of the nature C double bond to oxygen. Then, that carbon is connected to, to this methyl and the other one is connected to this methyl. But when we look at this, it is of the nature C double bond oxygen, this side connected to hydrogen, and this side connected to an alkyl group. So when we take a close look at the two functional groups, the two functional groups look identically different. Although some similarities could happen in some chemical properties, but we have a big deal of chemical properties that are different by the fact of the difference in the uh, functional groups. So this one, we would call it, since it is having two carbon atoms, three, we would call it propanone. Non coming from ketone. That's how they are related. Then this aldehyde isomer would call it propanal as the IUPACA name. So really we would say that the two are different by the virtue of the change in the functional group. And that is really functional group isomerism. But when you look at both compounds conform to the same molecular formula to the same general molecular formula, they conform to the same molecular formula, but then can form different isomers due to change in their functional groups. That is what we are calling functional group isomerism.
Now, we can proceed and look at another study case or example of how compounds can exhibit functional group isomerism. Another set of compounds is carboxylic acids. Acids are isomeric with ester with esters. Yeah. They are isomeric with esters. Now we can look at the, the difference between the two is that these ones identically have a terminal functional group. These ones have an internal functional group. The same applies to alcohols and ethers. Ethers, internal functional group. Alcohols, terminal functional groups. Although some alcohols can also have an internal functional group. Then, aldehydes and ketones, those are carbonyl compounds. Aldehydes also have a terminal functional group, while ketones have an internal functional group. The same applies to carboxylic acids now. Now let us take a close look at uh, a carboxylic acid like CH3, CH2, COO, that one. Or we can represent it as C, as molecular formula C3, H6, uh, then O2. That's a carboxylic acid. Now, this carboxylic acid we can represent it as, for purposes of showing the, how bonds are formed, CH2, C double bond, then OH. That is now a carboxylic acid. And we definitely call it, because it is having three carbon atoms, we would call it propanoic, propanoic acid. Then, this carboxylic acid can rearrange itself to ensure that this functional group is between the two carbon atoms. For example, we can have uh, CH3, C, this time the functional group is in the middle. Now, when you look at number of carbon atoms here, 1, 2, 3, we also have 1, 2, 3 carbonyls, hydrogens. These are five, these are three, five, six. We still have six hydrogen atoms, two oxygens, then also two oxygens. But when you look at this, the structure of this compound is very different from the structure of this compound. Now, the fact is, this is a carboxylic acid. Acid, while well, this is an ester. Now, this ester is called a methyl ethanoate. Methyl ethanoate. And when we're naming an ester, we simply look at the group which is attaching attached to the oxygen. What group is that one? We call it a methyl. Then the other remaining group came from a carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid, if it has lost one, one hydrogen, is to respond to that because of the number of uh, carbon atoms involved. So this is functional group, isomerism, and it really uh, ends here.